Hello, grade 10 students. Welcome to our English class. Oh, what's with those beautiful smiles? Let me guess. You are excited to learn English with me again today, right? I knew it. Well, I am also excited to bring you today's lesson. And in case you forgot, I am your one and only, Ma'am Daryl. Get your pen and journal notebook for our word of the day. Shh! Did you hear that loud noise? Listen. He grunted and in a gruff voice said, Give me the trash and I'll throw it out. Oh, that's a blast of energy. A cacophony of sound. Wait, do you know what cacophony means? Cacophony is the use of a combination of words with loud, harsh sounds. In literary studies, this combination of words with rough or unharmonious sounds is used for a noisy or jarring poetic effect. Cacophony is considered the opposite of euphony, which is the use of beautiful, melodious sounding words. Did you listen to what cacophony means? Well, if you listen, then you can write a sentence with a cacophony of sound in your journal notebook. Wait, I have something to ask. Do you have a good pair of ears? Ears that are good at listening to your friend's problems? Ears that are good at listening to what your teacher is saying? Ears that are good at listening to your friend's problems? Or even ears that listen to their favorite music? Do you agree that by listening well, you will be able to solve a problem or give the right judgment? In fact, it will be easier for us to solve problems or give a good opinion if we listen analytically. Analytical listening? What does that mean? In today's lesson, we will discuss analytical listening along with other types of listening. You will be able to identify the different types of listening, how they are different from each other, and be able to apply them. But first, let's define listening. Listening is the active process of receiving and responding to spoken and sometimes unspoken messages. To be a successful listener, it is important to understand that listening involves more than just hearing the words that are directed at us. Hearing is the passive intake of sounds, while listening is the act of intentionally working to comprehend the sounds being heard. Listening is an active process by which we make sense of, assess, and respond to what we just heard. The listening process involves five stages. Receiving, understanding, evaluating, remembering, and responding. An effective listener must hear and identify the speech sound, understand the message, evaluate or assess the message, remember what has been said, and respond either verbally or non-verbally to the information. When we engage in listening, we are doing so for many different reasons depending upon the goals in which we are trying to achieve. It's equally important to note the different types of listening which are Appreciative listening, emphatic listening, comprehensive or active listening, and critical or analytical listening. Appreciative listening, listening for pleasure and enjoyment, as we listen to music, to a comedy routine, or to an entertaining speech. When you listen for appreciation, you are listening for enjoyment. Think about the music you listen to. You usually listen to music because you enjoy it. The same can be said for appreciative listening when someone is speaking. 
Some common types of appreciative listening can be found in sermons from places of worship, from a motivational speech by people we respect or hold in high regard, or even from a stand-up comedian who makes us laugh. Emphatic listening. Show mutual concern. Understand from the speaker's situation and feelings. Focus on the speaker, not on yourself. Emphatic listening. When you listen emphatically, you are doing so to show mutual concern. During this type of listening, you are trying to identify with the speaker by understanding the situation in which he or she is discussing. You are stepping into the other's shoes to get a better understanding of what he or she is talking about. Usually, during this type of listening, you want to be fully present in the moment or mindfully listening to what the speaker is saying. Your goal during this time is to focus on the speaker, not on yourself. You are trying to understand from the speaker's perspective. Comprehensive or active listening. One of the most difficult types of listening because it requires you to not only concentrate but to actively participate in the process. Comprehensive or active listening. This process is active. In class, you should be focused, possibly taking notes of the speaker's main ideas. Identifying the structure of the speech and evaluating the supports he or she offers as evidence. This is one of the difficult types of listening because it requires you to not only concentrate but to actively participate in the process. The more you practice listening to comprehend, the stronger listener you become. Critical or analytical listening. Listening to evaluate the content of the message. Evaluate the message that is being sent and decide for yourself if the information is valid. Critical or analytical listening. Have you tried purchasing a product because you were convinced by the seller or voted for a political candidate because you believed what he or she was saying during his or her speech? Well, those are examples of critical or analytical listening. Critical listening is listening to evaluate the content of the message. As a critical listener, you are listening to all parts of the message, analyzing it, and evaluating what you heard. When engaging in critical listening, you are also critically thinking. You are making mental judgments based on what you see, hear, and read. Your goal as a critical listener is to evaluate the message that is being sent and decide for yourself if the information is valid. When you listen critical or analytically, you are evaluating the message engaged whether you will accept or reject the information you have heard. I believe you are now ready to test your listening skills. Listen to the short video clip. I repeat, listen only as the video plays. Then, answer the questions that will be posted afterwards. Try to avoid it. Conflict is just a normal part of life. A friend, an enemy, our parents, it doesn't matter. We will disagree with others on things. Not everyone sees things the same way. Sometimes these conflicts can get pretty heated and snowball into something much bigger. We don't like this. So, what can we do to not go there? Well, you're in luck because today I have four simple things to remember to get from conflict to resolution. I'm Elvis, this is Rocket Kids, and let's get this started. Just stop. You ever had someone disagree with you? Sure you have. We think something is unfair, someone is being mean, or someone thinks we are wrong about something. 
It happens to everyone. Even awesome people like you and me. Yeah, we're awesome. Look, when someone disagrees with us, it can leave us feeling frustrated, upset, or even a little mad. Maybe a lot mad. We may blame them, say hurtful words, or raise our voice. Then what happens? You guessed it. The situation gets worse. Before you know it, everyone is upset, saying hurtful words, screaming, and no one wins. So, stop before you react. Think about the situation. Recognize your emotions and stop. Did I say stop? Yes. Stop and don't go there. Watch your words. Sometimes we can't find the right words and we say something we didn't mean, especially when we are upset. Just remember, once you've said something, you can't take it back. It's out there. You said it and they heard it and they probably didn't like it. So use nice words and calm voice. Don't put the other person down. Don't use mean comments and don't blame them for what's happening. These are all surefire ways for things to go horribly wrong. Watch your words. You can't take them back. Just be nice. No one can be mad and nice. Listen up. This is a big one and often the hardest to do. When we are upset, it's hard for us to really hear what someone is saying to us. Like, really hear with these two things. There is a reason the other person is upset or feels the way they do. Just like us, we are upset for a reason. But if we can listen to why the other person feels the way they do and put ourselves in their shoes, then it's much easier for us to find a solution. You can even ask them what's bothering them so you can work it out. Let them talk. Don't interrupt, just listen. And let them know you understand how they feel. Finding a solution. This is where we can work together to come up with the answer that solves our problem. Remember, we aren't going to get here if we don't know what the problem is. So stop, watch your words, listen up. Each person can come up with solutions to the problem. Talk quietly about it, take turns and don't scream. No one wants to see you pitch a baby fit. We are not babies. Solutions can be hard and you may not get exactly what you want because we have to compromise. Everyone should be equally okay with the solution. Sometimes we just have to accept it even if we don't get anything we want. The important thing is we didn't go there. So there you have it. Four simple things to remember to keep us from going there when we disagree. There was a lot more to this, trust me, but this is a great start. Remember to stop, watch your words, and listen up. And don't go there. Now, try to answer these questions. Number one, what did you listen to? Two, based on what you heard, what do we usually disagree with? Three, why do we usually get in conflict with others? Four, how do we usually feel when others disagree with us? Five, give the four steps on how we could resolve conflicts recommended in the video. Congratulations! You successfully completed your learning adventure. Again, I am your one and only Ma'am Daryl and I will see you on your next learning journey. Bye!